Hi guys, great to see you again. Today we're going to further our study of acids and bases, looking at what is it that makes an acid or base strong or weak, and also how do you name them. So let's jump in with our lesson uh, 9.2, naming acids and bases. So our um, aim for today is what makes an acid or base strong um, or weak, and also how do you name them. After the question of the day, which is a demo, I've got another demo, and if you are able to make it to the classroom session on Thursday, I'll do the demos in class for the live session, but I can't do them from home. Um, and then the lesson will be about acid-base strength, um, and then naming acids and bases, and we'll practice that with homework 20. All right, so I'm just gonna walk you through the question of the day and the demo, and so you can hopefully kind of picture it, even though we can't see it now. Um, so I'm about to test a solution of sodium hydroxide, aqueous. What do you expect to happen? Do you expect it to conduct electricity? Do you um, expect it to turn the litmus paper a certain color? If so, what color? Do you expect it to react with a metal? And how do you think it would taste slash feel? We, of course, wouldn't do that one even in person, but if you could imagine. All right, so sodium hydroxide, is that an acid, a base, or neither? That's right, it's a base. It makes hydroxide as its only negative ion in water. And it's on table L of your reference table, common bases. Um, first question, do you expect it to conduct electricity? Yes. All basic substances conduct electricity. So do acidic substances. Um, number two, what color do you think it will turn the litmus paper? Uh, acids turn the litmus paper red. Bases, like sodium hydroxide, turn it blue. And then three, will it react with the metal? No. Acids do, but not bases. And four, how do you think it would taste slash feel? Well, acids taste sour. Bases, like sodium hydroxide, tend to taste um, bitter and feel soapy. All right, so here's some answers from homework 19. Um, we'll look back at a couple of them. Uh, number one said, which substance is an arrhenius acid? So I'm looking for one from table K, common acids in my reference tables, or just one that looks like it would be more likely to um, make a hydrogen ion in water. So H3PO4 is on the reference table, that's phosphoric acid. Uh, number three, it says the only positive ion found in H2SO4 aqueous is the, well, H2SO4 is on the acid table, that's sulfuric acid, and all acids make hydrogen or hydronium ions as the only positive ion in water. Remember that hydrogen and hydronium are interchangeable. Um, let's skip it down to number nine. In an aqueous solution, which substance would react with a metal and cause bubbling? So this is a description of an acidic solution. So we're looking for the answer that's an acid, and CH3COOH is the only one that is from reference table K, common acids. That's ethanoic acid or acetic acid. All right, so today's lesson is 9.2. What makes an acid or base strong and how do we name them? Fun fact, the planet Venus is covered in a layer of sulfuric acid. What a lovely atmosphere. Just kidding, that would be pretty miserable. Question for you all. Would you ever use an acid to wash out your eye? Of course not, right? In fact, if you were to get an acid in your eye, you would go to the eye wash station. Um, hydrochloric acid, for instance, causes major damage even to your skin. And yet, if you've ever bought eye drops, that's the, the main ingredient in an eye drop solution is boric acid. So what's the difference here? Maybe you do use an acid to wash out your eye after all. Why? boric acid, but not hydrochloric. Um, in class, if you were 
there, I would do the uh, demo with the conductivity tester, where I put the giant conductivity tester light bulb into two solutions. In one of them, it's going to light up just barely. In the other one, it's going to be very bright. So why is that? Um, we know that the conductivity tester tests for ions. So if there's a, not very many ions, but a little bit, it'll make a soft glow, a little bit of a light. If there's a lot of ions, it gets real bright. So that means this solution had a lot of ions. This solution, just a few. Um, and right now, these solutions are both acidic. So that means this conductivity tester is testing for hydrogen ions. One of them had just a few and the other one had way more. So the one with just a few is the weak acid. The one with way more is the strong acid. And just like you can have different molarities, different concentrations, um, you can also have just certain substances that make more ions than others. So this is an example on the left of a weak acid. We can see that here's an H plus ion, here's an H plus ion, here's a couple more, but a lot of the molecules didn't make ions. They stayed together or this bond didn't break. So it didn't make very many ions. Whereas this one, every single molecule made an ion. So this is the strong acid. Acid It really conducts electricity. It has way more ions. Now the weird thing about this is which of these solutions do you think has stronger bonds? It's not the strong acid. It's this one has stronger bonds holding the hydrogen ion to the rest of the acid. And so that stronger bond makes it a weaker acid. Whereas these must have had really weak bonds because they all just broke immediately as soon as they got in water. So the one with the weakest bonds is the strongest acid. Okay, let's take a look at these two diagrams and you can figure out which of these is a strong base. You can count the number of hydroxide ions to help you with your stuff. That's right, here's the strong base. This one, every single molecule broke apart. And in this one, some of them stayed together. Um, some of them broke apart, but there's mostly a lot of water in this so, uh, solution. So when we're thinking about weak versus strong, this is true for acids and bases, the weak acids and bases, very few of the molecules dissociate, few ions are created. In a strong acid or base, all compounds turn into ions. Um, on your reference tables, table K and table L, common acids and common bases, we've got some strong and some weak acids and bases. Um, here's all the strong acids, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and phosphoric acid. And if you want, you can, um, like circle them on your reference table or star them or something. Here's all the strong bases. Oops, here's all the weak acids, all the other ones. <laughs> so nitrous acid, sulfurous acid, carbonic and ethanoic or acetic acid, which is vinegar is this one. All right, common bases that are strong. Anything that ends in hydroxide pretty much is a strong base. And the most common main weak base you ever hear of is ammonia, the one in Windex, glass cleaner. All right, so do you ever drink Gatorade? Why? Like, what's the point of the Gatorade? Yes, it's for replenishing your electrolytes. Electrolytes, what are electrolytes? Electrolytes, remember, are just ions right? They are the salts that you sweat out and you need to replace after you've sweat a bunch. Um, so an electrolyte in the chemistry sense is anything that conducts electricity. So is an acid an electrolyte? Yes. 
Is a base an electrolyte? Yes. Is a salt water solution an electrolyte? Yes. Because all those things make a bunch of ions, they are all strong electrolytes. Bing. All right, now we're going to switch over to how do you name the acids and bases. The easiest way is to just look on your reference tables, but um, here's a way if you come across something that's not on your reference tables. For, um, and this is for binary acids, ternary acids, which means acids which with um, three or more ele three elements in them are more complicated. We're not going to learn them, but most of them are in your reference tables. It's most of the important things. But for binary acids, that means it's just going to be hydrogen plus one other element. It's a pretty easy formula. It's just you say hydro, then the name of the element, but end it in ic, and then say acid. So most of you guys know this one, HCl, that's hydrochloric acid. It's hydrogen and chlorine, but you change the ending to ic, and then you say acid. Pretty easy, right? All right, how about this one then, HBr? Yeah, so you say hydro, then the name of the element, bromine, but end it in ic, so hydrobromic, and then acid. Ta-da, you know how to name acids. Okay, um, oh, and that was just to show you some of the ternary acids. You can just see their names right on here. And you might even notice some patterns if you look at that. Well, um, naming bases, um, also very simple and no different from how you would have named them if you saw them before and just assumed it was a regular ionic compound. It's the same rule. You say the name of the first element and then you say hydroxide for the OH. So NaOH is sodium hydroxide. How about this one? Say the name of the first element, potassium, and then hydroxide. It's potassium hydroxide. Simple as that. So acids get the name acid in their name. Bases just get the element and then hydroxide. All right, let's do two examples. Example number one, which corresponds to the official name of milk of magnesia, MgOH2? Our options are magnesium dihydroxide, magnesium hydroxic acid, or magnesium hydroxide. Do, 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 do. Yeah, magnesium hydroxide, because it's a base. You just say the name of the first element and then hydroxide. Example two, which compound is the strongest electrolyte? So we're looking for something that conducts electricity, either an acid, a base, or an ionic compound. Because we know ionic compounds conduct electricity in water too. That's right, this first one here is an acid. It's on your acid table, that's acetic acid. Do you guys recognize this one? Yeah, that's sugar, strong covalent bonds. Those will not conduct electricity. And this last one looks like it's almost a base, but these are all nonmetals. So again, strong covalent bonds will not be an electrolyte. Okay, last summary question. Which two compounds are electrolytes? Option one, C6H1206 and CH3CH2OH. Option two, C6H12O6 and HCl. Option three, NaOH and HCl. Option four, NaOH and CH3CH2OH. Great, so this guy here is sugar, not an electrolyte. This guy is um, something else with all nonmetals, covalent bonds, not an electrolyte. Sugar again. Ooh, HCl, that's an acid, that's an electrolyte, but sugar isn't. Here we have sodium hydroxide, that's a base, that's an electrolyte, and hydrochloric acid, that's an acid, that's an electrolyte, yay. And just to make sure, option four has sodium hydroxide, yes, it's an electrolyte, and then this thing, which is not an electrolyte, all covalent bonds. So the answer is three, NaOH, sodium hydroxide, 
and HCl, hydrochloric acid. That's it, you guys. Great work. Um, tonight's homework is homework 20. Let me know if you have any questions.